Okay, we ready to get started and have some fun? So I want to make um, a clarification because based on some of the questions um, I had um, up front, there's a little bit of confusion, my fault, and I apologize. Um, I, I, do, I just want to reemphasize that when I was talking about um, the Lab ID events may not necessarily um, be considered healthcare-associated infections. Um, I, I do want to stress that um, it doesn't mean, we're not saying that the patient doesn't have an infection with MRSA or an infection with C, with C. difficile, because anytime you have MRSA in the bloodstream, that is an infection. Anytime you have a patient that presents with diarrhea um, for over 24 hours and a C. difficile toxin in that stool, that is an infection. So um, there was a little bit of confusion. So I just to reemphasize, we're not saying that it's not an infection. What we're saying is because the HAI rules as far as counting an infection and the C. difficile rules are different, um, then the categorizations are a little bit different. Okay, so I just wanted to clarify that um, so that you all don't go back thinking, oh, well, our C. difficiles may not be infections because they are infections if that toxin is being um, isolated out of a loose stool. And if you have MRSA in the blood, it's an infection, okay? So it's, it's about the timing of lab ID events and when the, the specimens are collected and if the patient presented to your facility, perhaps with signs and symptoms that for, for some reason wasn't tested until day four, yes, it's an infection. Yes, it will be categorized as healthcare onset, but does that mean that it's truly an HAI for your facility? Maybe not if you're looking at the HAI rules. Does that give me nods? Does that, does that clarify that? Okay. Okay, ready to have some fun? And then I'll get you guys out of here. So um, it's going to be really cold tonight, just to let you know. Um, we're supposed to have wind up to 40 miles an hour, I hear. Um, so enjoy that. <laughs> Hopefully you're not on the top floor in your hotels. Okay. Our first case is man versus dog. So on 3-1, we have a 22-year-old male admitted to 5 West Medical Unit after a panic attack following a dog bite from the family Yorkie. Yorkies can be mean. Patient has a history of frequent antibiotic use for chronic UTIs. On 3-2, the patient has a wound draining, small amount of clear drainage, and he complains of lower abdominal cramps, relieved with medication. His panic attacks decreased to three to four per day. Good. So on 3-3, three, three, uh, later that day, the patient has a fever of 38.2 degrees Celsius, and he complains of worsening abdom lower abdominal pain. He has a bowel movement with loose, unformed stool. So they move him to 3 East to accommodate his frequent bathroom visits. My assumption is that he was in a semi-private room. Can you imagine? Okay. So on 3-4, while on 3 East, the patient continues to complain of lower abdominal pain and loose stools. Over the course of the day, the patient had several loose stools. So on 3-5, an unformed stool tested positive for C. difficile toxin. So if you're reporting fac wide in lab ID events, should this be entered as a C. difficile lab ID event? Okay, so do your little clickers. I, I'm hoping they work. Okay, so I think you guys probably all know this. So yes, this is the first toxin positive uh, collected for this patient and location with no previous in 14 days. Very good. Smart group of people. Okay, so yes. What location is a lab ID event attributed? Okay, ready? So three east, very good. 
Okay, so remember the FAC white end, um, remember that is um, not used to identify a specific location. That's used to report your, your dom denominator data and for your monthly report, okay? So it's not, so all of your inpatient locations fall under that FAC white end. Okay, so it's three E's because that was the location that the patient was assigned when that patient, when that specimen was collected. And just as a reminder, the transfer rule does not apply for lab ID events. Okay, so how will this event be categorized by the NHSN application? So a hint, the admission was on 3-1 and the specimen was collected on 3-4. Okay, ready? Healthcare facility onset. Very good. Oh, I see why you're laughing now. <laughs> well, you could, I guess, report it as funny. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so healthcare facility onset. Okay, let's move on to our next patient here. Man versus buffet, or is it? So on 3-1, our patient presents to the emergency department with complaints of diarrhea and lower abdominal pain for the past two days. He states that he's been on antibiotics for treatment of a UTI, but he also ate fresh fruit from the CDC three days ago. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> three days ago, and he believes he has food poisoning. Patient is hypotensive and has poor skin tuger. A Dual specimen collected in the emergency department, test positive for C. difficile toxin, negative for salmonella and other enteric pathogens. On 3-1, the patient is admitted to 2 South Medical Unit for intravenous hydration and medical management. For FACYDN lab ID event reporting, can this result be entered as a lab ID event? And if so, what location would be entered? Okay, ready? Yes, it would be two south, the admitting location. Very good. Okay, so two south, because he was admitted on the same calendar day as specimen collection. What if you are participating in both FACYDN and emergency department location-specific reporting? What would you do then? Are we going to have 50% choose number four? Okay, so the correct answer is you would report the positive C. diff lab ID event separately, once for the emergency department and again for 2 South. Okay, 8% of us in here are funny. So again, so this is just a screenshot to show you um, when you're reporting it for FACWIDE in, you would select no for your outpatient, but then when you report for the ED, you would change that to a yes. What if the specimen was collected in the ED on 3-1 and the patient was admitted but he was not physically moved in an inpatient unit until er the early morning of 3-2? What would you do then? Okay, we ready? Okay, so you do not enter a lab ID event uh, for FACYDN since the specimen collection and physical admission dates are different. Very good. Okay. Case number three. So we have on 215 an 85-year-old patient admitted to inpatient unit 3 East from rehab facility. The patient was discharged from your facility two weeks ago after spending three weeks in the ICU after a skydiving incident. 
Upon admission to three E's, the patient is noted to have foul, loose stools. On 216, after three episodes of loose stools over the course of 24 hours, an unformed stool specimen was collected and tested positive for uh, C. difficile toxin. For fact-wide in lab ID event reporting, should this be entered into NHSN as a lab ID event? So number one, yes, the specimen was collected from 3 East inpatient, or no, this infection belongs to the hospice. Okay, <laughs> let's see what we got, yep. So yes, you're going to enter this um, for three E's, the inpatient location of where it was collected. Very good. Okay, how will NHSN categorize this C. diff lab ID event? Number one, community onset. Number two, healthcare facility onset. Three, community onset healthcare facility associated. Or four, NHSM will not categorize the event. The user will need to make the decision. I call number four the dream. Ready? Okay, so good. So it will be a co -hikfa. And the reason is that this patient was previously discharged from your facility in the last four weeks prior to the current date of the stool specimen. Um, and then the stool was collected uh, less than four days after admission. So first it was categorized as community onset and then further categorized as a co -hikfa. Very good. Case... Three, okay, continues. What categorization would the application assign if the stool specimen was collected four days after admission to the hospital? Community onset, since the patient was admitted with symptoms of foul stool. Healthcare facility onset. Or co since the patient was admitted from another healthcare facility. What do you think? Okay, ready? Healthcare facility onset. Very good. It was healthcare facility onset because it was collected more than three days after admission. Remember that signs and symptoms on admission or history um, doesn't go into play in that particular categorization. Okay, case four. What if a patient with no previous admission to your facility presents with symptoms of diarrhea and fever on admission, but the C. difficile toxin was negative on admission and subsequently positive on day four of admission? What would you do? Number one, I can override NHSN and categorize the event as community onset since the patient was symptomatic. Number two, NHSN will categorize as community onset. Or three, NHSN will categorize as healthcare facility onset. Okay, ready? Excellent, very good. So NHSM would still categorize the event as healthcare onset since the first positive stool was collected on or after day four of the admission. Okay. Case five. If your hospital is participating in the CMS inpatient quality uh, reporting program, which locations must you select when setting up your monthly reporting plan for C. difficile lab ID event reporting? So number one, fact wide in. Number two, Emergency department, outpatient surgery, affiliated physicians. Number three, FACWIDE out, which includes all outpatient locations affiliated with the facility. Okay. Very good. Excellent. You guys are good. I'm impressed. So remember, CMS requires acute care facilities to report C. difficile lab ID events for all inpatient locations, which falls under that umbrella of fact white end where that stool specimen was collected. Okay, and again, it's, it excludes the baby locations. Okay, case six. What monthly denominator data is entered for C. difficile lab ID event reporting for fact white end? So one, patient admissions by each unit and total patient days by unit. 
C. Difi number two, C. Difficile patient days and admissions for all inpatient locations minus your baby's locations. Number three, total patient days and total admissions for all inpatient locations. Or number four, total patient encounters. Okay, ready? Number two. Very good. So the difference between number two and number three is very similar. So I can see where some of you got hung up on. So number three, remember the total patient days and the total admissions, that's specific to your MRSA lab ID events because you're not excluding those baby locations. Okay, but for C. difficile, you definitely want to exclude the babies. Okay, so this is just showing you where you enter that. Okay, case seven. On 6-15, a 90-year-old patient admitted from the emergency department to ICU following a pogo stick accident. A Foley and central line was inserted and the patient was scheduled for emergent surgery following a pelvic, for a pelvic fracture. The patient also had multiple lacerations. On 6-16, the patient spikes a fever of 101 and urine draining cloudy drainage in a bedside bag. A urine culture is collected. On 618, the urine culture results positive for E. coli and MRSA. Antibiotic treatment begun. On 621, the patient continues to have fever of 101.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Blood cultures collected from peripheral IV site. And then on 622, two of two blood cultures are positive for MRSA. What are we going to do? Since your patient participates in MRSA bacteremia lab ID event reporting for FACWIDE N, what would you report? Would you report this positive blood culture as a lab ID event? Number one, no, since the patient already had a positive urine culture with MRSA for this month and location, the MRSA blood is considered a duplicate. Number two, yes, this is considered a unique blood source. Or three, no, this is a clapsy. All right, you ready? Okay. Yes. Yes. Wow. Very good. So, um, go into number one. Um, if um, if you report all specimens, all MRSA specimens. Um, if since this was a blood, you would still report it because it would be considered a unique blood source, meaning although the patient may have had a positive MRSA in another body site for the month, the blood still has to be reported, um, even if it's within 14 days. And that's for those of you in here that are reporting all specimens, okay? So you'll just want to maybe put a little star to review um, a unique blood source, okay? Very good. Okay, moving on. What if the patient had a previous positive MRSA blood culture three days prior to this culture while in the same location? So number one, this would be a duplicate MRSA isolate and not a MRSA bacteremia lab ID event. Number two, I would report as a MRSA bacteremia lab ID event. Or number three, I would report as an infection surveillance event. So remember, he had another positive MRSA, same location, three days prior. Okay. You ready? Very good. So he was, um, let me see if I have an explanation for this one. Okay, so the reason that you would... Um, is because he did have a prior MRSA blood culture result in two weeks from the same location. So it would be considered a duplicate. And remember, we don't report the duplicates. But when you get that lab ID event calculator, you can throw it in there and see what it says. Okay. Number eight. On 6-1, Mr. Nasal, a local nursing home resident, is admitted to the ICU with a stage four sacral ulcer. Upon admission into the ICU, an active nasal screen tests positive for MRSA. Blood cultures were um, also collected upon admission into the ICU. 
Should this positive MRSA nasal screen be entered into NHSN as a MRSA lab ID event? I think you're all going to get this right, so yes or no. And this applies to all facilities, regardless if you're reporting all specimens, this answer applies, no. Very good, excellent. Woohoo! 100%. If I had candy, I would throw it out there. <laughs> so we all know that surveillance testing never included. Okay. What if the blood culture also tests positive for MRSA? Would you report this? No, I would not consider this to be an MDRO lab ID event since the patient had a MRSA positive nasal screen. Or two, yes, since the positive blood culture was obtained for clinical decision making, I would report this as a MRSA bacteremia lab ID event. Okay, ready? Yes. Okay, good. So again, um, even if your facility is reporting all MRSA specimens, you would still report this because it would represent a unique blood source. Very good. Okay, so here's your explanation. Okay, case nine. We're going to get harder in a minute. We've got to step this up. What denominator data is entered for MRSA bacteremia lab ID event monitoring for, for FAC-wide N? So number one, total patient admissions by each unit and total patient days by unit. Two, patient days and admissions for all inpatient locations minus NICU well baby location and other well baby locations. Number three, total patient days, and total admissions for all inpatient locations, or number four, total patient encounters. So we're looking at FAC-wide N, MRSA. Okay, you ready? Dun -dun -dun -dun. To give us the answer. Oh, there we go. Excellent. I'm impressed. 97% of you got that right. That was a little bit tricky. Okay, number 10. If your hospital is participating in the CMS inpatient quality reporting program, which locations must you include in your monthly reporting plan for MRSA bacteremia lab ID event reporting? Number one, ICU, NICU, medical surgical units, emergency department, oncology, Number two, FAC-wide N, which includes all inpatient locations. Number three, FAC-wide N, which includes all inpatient locations except no monitoring in NICU and well baby locations. Or number four, FAC-wide out, which includes all outpatient locations affiliated with the facility. Okay, ready? FAC-wide N. Excellent. So again, remember for MRSA, you're looking at all locations, um, not excluding any baby locations for your MRSA. Okay, and again, here's your explanation. Okay, so remember for uh, CMS, if, if you're participating, then it includes MRSA bacteremia lab ID events for all inpatient locations at the facility-wide inpatient level. And then this is just a little reminder in here that the FAC-wide N is a virtual location within NHSM, which does mean that the user does not define it. We have it there for you. And um, all of your inpatient locations that are mapped as inpatient locations, we automatically throw under that umbrella for you, okay? Um, so you're, you're going to see that FAC-wide N terminology and your monthly reporting plan and your summary data uh, form and then for conferring rights if you do that. But you will not ever select that as an individual location when reporting an event. Okay. A positive MRSA blood specimen collected from an inpatient on day four of admission would be categorized as, number one, healthcare facility onset, number two, community onset, number three, community onset, healthcare facility associated, number four, it depends on the patient's history. 
Day four. Oh, I'm sorry, we're lab ID, Mercer Bacteremia. I apologize. Trick question. Healthcare facility onset. Good job. Okay, so just remember, um, for those of you who selected number four, or 7%, um, for lab ID event reporting, the patient history as far as signs and symptoms or, or previous infection um, does not come into play when looking at um, if, it, if it's going to be categorized as healthcare onset versus community onset. Good job. Okay, and this is just the definition again for you. Um, and I'm sure you have all already recognized that um, the healthcare facility onset for lab ID event reporting is greater than three days after admission, and then for HAI reporting, it's greater than two. We did that because we like to confuse our users. Not really, but okay. Okay, what if the patient was symptomatic for sepsis? on admission, but the blood culture was not collected until day four of admission. How many of us have been in this situation? <laughs> so number one, I can override NHSN and categorize the event as community onset. Number two, NHSN will categorize as community onset. Or number three, NHSN will categorize as healthcare facility onset. Excellent. Good job. So again, it would still categorize that event as a healthcare facility onset since that first positive blood specimen that was collected um, was collected on or after day four, okay? Case 12. For fact-wide end reporting, should lab ID events be reported to NHSN for patients housed in observation locations? So let's pretend that says for inpatients housed in observation locations. That makes it easier. So for fact-wide end reporting, should lab ID event, events be reported for, to NHSN for inpatients housed in observation locations, or any patient housed in an observation location? Okay, you ready? Give you a few more seconds. Ready? Dun, dun, dun. Whew, that was a close tie. Okay, so um, because I knew that this was tricky, I'm going to ask it again in just a little bit of a different way. Are patients housed in observation locations included in patient day and admission counts for FACWIDE in reporting? So let's just assume that your observation locations are considered outpatient locations because most facilities consider those outpatient. So for fact-wide in, would you include? So think of this as ditto. No. Very good. You guys see, you listened. So I've got an explanation, and I think this might answer your question back there. So observation patients and observation locations, okay? So an observation location, such as like a 24-hour observation area or, or somewhere that you consider or you have mapped as an outpatient location, it is generally considered an outpatient location unless you map it otherwise, going by that 80-20 rule. So time spent in that unit does not contribute to your 
inpatient counts, okay? Um, so admissions to outpatient units represent encounters, okay, and not um, included. So that includes if you have a patient for billing purposes that has been deemed inpatient, but because you have no inpatient beds, you're in overflow mode, you send that patient to an outpatient location, that patient is not included in FACWIDE in. okay? Um, what we tell facilities, if this is something that's really common in your facility, it may be that um, first you wanna verify that that observation location is indeed an outpatient location according to your patient population. And if it is, um, what you can do is you can um, include the observation unit as a, its own unit for outpatient lab ID monitoring so that you can look at events specific to that location, okay? But it does not include in your FACWIDE N counts. Okay, just because I know you haven't had enough of this yet. <laughs> Are observation patients housed in inpatient locations included in your FACWIDE N lab ID event reporting? Yes. Oh. I think we all agree. Yes. Very good. So, I think I have, a, okay, so I do have an explanation. So, if an observation patient is sent to an inpatient location for monitoring, that patient should be included in all of your inpatient count, device counts as well. So if you're looking at cal eclapsy, that patient's included because they're in that unit. So they are at risk for whatever's going on in that unit. So then you would just naturally also include that patient in with your fact wide in. And think about that the same way for the outpatient. So do you monitor device days um, in your observation units? Do you monitor. So think of lab ID event reporting kind of the same. It's not a unit that you collect device days in. So it, because it's not an outpatient unit, so you're not going to include inpatient um, lab ID accounts for that unit. That's how I kind of remember that um, when I'm reading cases. Yes. If you ask me the question, I'll repeat it. Correct. Yeah, you are absolutely correct. Okay. It is, is not based on the billing status of the patient. It is based on that physical location of the patient. You're correct. Okay, now this is where it really gets fun. So meet Tim. I think he says Jack on your handouts. I changed his name, so I, I, couldn't, I couldn't make my columns line up, so I needed a shorter name, so. <laughs> so meet Tim or Jack, depending on what you're looking at. Um, so I want you to assume that this is your line listing. Wouldn't this be great if this was our only line listing for the day? And so assume that all of his specimens are included on this line listing, okay? So as we go through. So looking at the first one, he was admitted on 6-1 to the ICU. He had a stool, we're assuming a loose stool specimen, collected while in the emergency department on 6-1. And that stool came back positive for C. diff toxin. Is this a lab ID event? And if so, what location? I don't think you guys can use your clickers on this, so we'll just kind of talk out loud. So yes, for the ICU. And the reason is because that specimen collection date equals his admission date, same calendar date. So again, the same admission, let's say on 6-2, uh, while in the ICU, he had a blood culture collected that was positive for MRSA. Do we include that as a lab ID event? Yes. And for what location? ICU. Yes because that's his first positive MRSA blood in that location, and he didn't have one while in the um, emergency department. Okay, and then moving forward to 612, he had another blood culture collected that was also MRSA positive. Do we count that one as a lab ID event? No. 
Excellent. It is considered a duplicate. Very good. It was only 10 days. Okay, then going forward on 620, he has another positive MRSA blood culture collected from the ICU. Do we count that? Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Remember, you're looking at the most recent specimen, not lab ID event. No. So the reason is, is because it, although it was greater than 14 days since his last lab ID event for MRSA bacteremia, it was only, what, like eight days since the last positive specimen. Okay, so then on 710, he had another MRSA blood while in the ICU. Do we count this? Yes. Yes, very good. So then he gets a little bit better, and he moves to 2 East. But wouldn't you know it, on 715, he has another MRSA blood. But in 2 East, would we count it? Yes. Yes. New location. Excellent. Okay, so let's try again. That was just practice. Okay, so this, this line listing has um, three patients. We have Bill, Lily, and Joe. So Bill, just assume that for these three patients, these are all of their lab results, okay, that we have. So Bill was admitted to the CCU on 615. He had a, uh, spec a blood specimen collected on 616 while in the CCU that was positive for MRSA. Is this a lab ID event? Yes, for CCU, first positive MRSA blood while in that location. Okay, and then on 620, he moved to 3 East and had a positive MRSA blood. Do we count that? Yes. For what location? 3 East. Three East. Excellent. Then Lily uh, was admitted on 72 to ICU, but she had a stool collected in the ED on 71 that was positive for C. diff. Do we count that as a lab ID event? No. You guys are good. Very good. Okay. And then Lily again on 7-6 had a stool specimen collected from the ICU that was positive for C. diff toxin. Do we count that one? Yes. Okay. Very good. First, first positive for that location. Okay. And then... Uh, Lily, again, on 710, uh, went to 2 West and had a positive stool for C. diff. Do we count that one? Yes. For 2 West. Very good. New location. And then let's go to Joe. Um, on, he was admitted on 6-1 into the ICU. On 6-6, he had a, a stool collected while in the ICU, and it was C. diff equivalent. Do we count that? Nothing else was done. No. Remember, it must be toxin positive. So same thing, if for some reason he had an antigen that was positive, but no toxin was performed, it's still not reportable. It has to be toxin PCR positive. Okay. One more time, and I'm going to let you guys get out of here. Okay. So now we have Jim, Sam, Tim, and Paul, and we're going to pretend that this is, um, this is, line listing is inclusive of all of their labs. So Jim was admitted to the CCU on 8-2. He had a blood MRSA that was collected while in the CCU on 8-2. Do we report this as a lab ID? Yes, for the CCU. It was his first positive MRSA. Then uh, again, Jim on 8-6 while in the CCU had a positive MRSA blood. Do we count this? No, it's a duplicate. Moving on to Sam. Sam was admitted to the ICU on 7-2. On 7-9, he had a stool collected that was antigen positive but toxin negative. Did we count this? No. Very good. Must be toxin. Okay, moving on to Tim. Uh, Tim was admitted to the NICU on 7-2. He had a loose stool specimen collected on 7-6 from the NICU that was positive for C. difficile. Do we count this? No. Oh, I am impressed you guys picked that one up. No, because it's in the NICU. Very good. You guys are awake. 
Then Paul was admitted on 8-2 to the med surge. On 8-5, he had a MRSA blood collected. Do we report this? Yes. Yes. First positive for the location. And then uh, on 8-5, in the ICU, he had another MRSA blood collected. Yes. Yes. Although it was the same day, it was a new location. Give yourselves a round of applause. That was excellent. Good job. So we do have some time if, um, if you guys want to ask questions in front of the group. I know some of you are um, stage shy, so I'll also stand down here uh, if you want to ask me questions in private and off camera. But this is your time uh, to shine if you want to get videoed. No takers? Oh, 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 wait, 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 I forgot to tell you guys, Dawn has some announcements. I was supposed to say that. Oops, sorry. Wait, do we have a question? Yeah. Sorry. Is, um, I, I, I was just curious with uh, Willie's situation, the one that um, um, she, she had the one that was taken in the ED, wasn't admitted till the following day. And Bill? They, they, uh, Willie. Oh, Lily. Okay. And um, so, I, I understand why you don't count. It, it was in the ice. It, uh, the initial culture was in the ED. She wasn't admitted till uh, the following day. Correct. Um, then had the positive four days later. Um, and so I, I understand the the reporting and county. I, I was just curious as to how would NHSN would that would that be counted then as a hospital acquired uh, onset case? It would be counted as healthcare facility onset, yes. Hmm. So this okay. is where our where you know I was trying to explain to you that although um, yes, it is a C difficile infection, the categorization of it is where it doesn't align with um, with the with the HAI definitions because in this case, if you're looking from um, the HAI definitions, if this patient came into your ED with diarrhea and a positive C. diff, it would be considered present on admission. But for lab ID, it's not. Good question. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask a general question. Uh, now, when you report for the state, uh, for, for the whole hospitals, uh, I don't know what kind of strategy you guys have for the VA hospitals. Are the VA included, reported, um, Reporting the old uh, HAI uh, infection. I don't know if they are participating with NHSN, then they they have to follow the NHSN criteria. But I'm not sure that all the VA hospitals are participating. They're they're not participating, so they may follow. Not sure what they follow as far as their surveillance definitions. So if that's so, how can we represent? Um, I don't know how the state, how, how the data or whatever reported can be kind of represent the whole hospitals in the, in, in the, for the state. So it's representing NHSN hospitals. Okay. So, so which may not you know, be all inclusive in, you know, obviously in those cases. All right. Thank you. Good question. This question comes up fairly regularly with hospitals. In the C. diff counts, total patient days, total um, admissions, mm -hmm. are you counting in the C. diff count the observation patient in an inpatient location in the inpatient admission count? Yes. Thank you. So any patient, so think about, um, you know, again, think about those device days. That's the easiest way to remember it. If that patient is in a unit that collects device days, they're going to get counted with your lab ID. That's, that's an easy way, you know, rule of thumb. Good question. Okay, so Dawn has um, a couple of announcements, and I'll hang out over here um, if you guys, because I know I had to um, push a couple of you away um, earlier. So, all right, thank you.